Welcome to the ITU studio here at the Radio Communication Assembly just prior to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Jennifer Manor who is the Senior Vice President for Echo Star. Jennifer, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me. Now this is a fair few times that we've had a, a chat in the That's studio correct. and uh, uh, I believe this is your eighth uh, World Radio Communication Conference? That's correct. Right. So You I keep better count than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise that. That they, that they allowed people in, in from high school, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I think in principle we've you know we've discussed it plenty of times the the importance of uh, uh, this this conference. Um, the other thing that we've talked about also is uh, gender balance uh, in uh, these conferences from the past. I mean, I think the, so. The first one you attended, um, I think the gender participation was was pretty slim when you originally. Uh, were involved, uh, you uh, think that the percentage was somewhere in the region of 18% Correct. or something like that? What, what's it like now? Has, have things evolved? Have things improved? Not dramatically, unfortunately. Um, so you're still seeing, I think you're up a little bit, and I think, I hate to say there's anything good out of COVID, but I think part of what we saw at COVID because of the remote participation was increased participation by women, um, which was very good. Um, we didn't have you have to pay for travel, you could join via Zoom, and I know on our hybrid, we're still seeing a fairly good uh, percentage of women. I don't have the numbers, but I think it's the in-person. We're still on the low end, and, and even on um, uh, officials, elected officials and committee chairs. So we're, we're looking at electing um, committee chairs for our study groups, and there's only one woman who's being considered for one of the um, I don't know, six or seven or eight committees, but out of, out of that percentage. Um, we did have some good news. Our head of the radio assembly is a woman, Carol Wilson from Australia. Um, of course, our CPM chair um, has been Cindy Cook for CPM one and two for this conference. So you're seeing changes. Um, they're just not as dramatic as I'd expect to see over almost um, 30 years that I've been doing this. Uh, you're right, starting when I was 16. Um, and that's not through lack of trying, is it? Right, that's correct. And, and I, think, I, I think part of it is it has to start, um, the member states have to get involved. And, and I think that's one of the important things about what we're trying to do here, which is we're hoping to have a gender resolution adopted um, by, the, by the Radio Assembly. This was called for by WRC 19. Um, and we've spent a, an, an enormous amount of um, time and resources in the different regions. Um, not just preparing for the resolution, probably more important, bringing um, more activities and getting more women involved and more member states involved in the idea of the importance of gender equity, parity, and equality at the ITU. Um, and we've also been working directly with women to mentor them and try and give them training um, and just so, so we can ensure that they feel confident. I, I think part of it is having people to trailblaze and people to fall in their shoes. So having people like Carol Wilson chairing a radio assembly, just um, as we had Vina Rawad in, in, um, a number of years ago chairing the World Radio Conference, gives people that path and having those people available to talk to younger people and, and you know maybe even not just women, but younger people in general so they can understand how do you get there. Um, and even at this conference, I'm working with a young woman who I'm trying to train on an on agenda item I'll be hopefully chairing um, and really trying to show her, well, here's how you do this, because she's very, very good, and I think she'd be a great addition to the ITU um, you know, study group process and so forth to have other people. So, so I think we spent a lot of time on that. Now, this morning we had Mario Manovich here, uh, the radio, director of the Radio Communication Bureau here at ITU, and he was telling us, of course, how important uh, uh, WRC is. All of the, the main uh, characteristics of this conference, which takes a very long time, as we know, it's a, over a <laughs> five-week period, and uh, it, uh, it requires a lot of stamina, let's put it that way. But, do, I mean, do you think that it's because women don't uh, uh, understand um, the, the relevance and the importance of the issues that are being discussed here? Or, or do you think there are other reasons for that? Not at all. Um, so women certainly understand the importance of the, um, of the conference. I, I think part of it is um, we've been doing a lot of work um, throughout the IT on girls and ICT and getting people even as young as, you know, three, four, starting, or maybe younger, getting excited about technical issues in engineering. And I think there's things that you're saying, you know, I mean, drones kind of get you enthused, right? Looking, you know, you've got um, 
direct to device. Soon everyone's going to have a satellite phone in their pocket. You've got all these other things. I'm not meaning to lead at any technology, but you know, but getting people excited, introducing them, and and really encouraging women to go into STEM careers. It was interesting. We've been um, negotiating the resolution um, and quite successfully. So I'm very optimistic that this will go forward. And um, I was talking to one of the lead spokespeople for one of the regions, and you know his wife is a computer scientist, his daughter's going to school for ICT technologies, and that's what we want. And I don't think that was happening as much when I was, when I was in college or, or younger. Um, so I think that's part of what we're doing too, and for people to see radio communications as an exciting field. Now, of course, as, uh, uh, apart from addressing the, the gender balance here, you're, of course, here re representing EchoStar. So let me ask you a little bit about the work of EchoStar and, and, and also, of course, about what you're hoping uh, to uh, take away uh, from this conference. So thanks. So we're, we're an exciting company, and we're actually just on the verge of restructuring with our sister company, Dish Networks. So we'll be a joint company, I'm hoping, by the end of the year. EchoStar has traditionally been a satellite operator. We've operated geostationary satellites for a number of years and provide high-speed broadband throughout the Americas. We also provide mobile satellite service um, throughout Europe. Um, and, um, and we're an equipment manufacturer, so we actually make um, devices. Many of the, much of the equipment that's used for fixed satellite around the world is, is made by our subsidiary Hughes. Um, with Dish Network, we're acquiring a very big direct-to-home um, provider in the United States, but also a significant holder of wireless spectrum. Um, so that's a big change for me from a WRC perspective. And they built out the first nationwide ORAN network in the United States we're really excited about. So for this WRC, um, we're, I kind of am playing a little bit of a different role. We're not just interested on the satellite issues, which still remain incredibly important, and we're in the process of developing and hopefully soon beginning to deploy a global direct-to-device satellite, a uh, low Earth orbit satellite system, but also how does that work with the terrestrial networks? And, and those issues are so important to us. And we actually are huge supporters of Open RAN. We think that's really important for the world in order for everyone to, to reach the goals that the ITU and the UN have for global connectivity um, very soon. <laughs> Is there any special message that you would like to uh, um, impart to, uh, to our listeners and, and viewers? Yeah, I, I, think as, I, I think one of the things we have to do is ensure that while we're trying to increase flexibility and increase usage of spectrum, that we, we don't harm systems that are out there that are continuing to evolve and grow. So all the ideas are fantastic. And I think we do need to make room, but we need to do it. And that's one of the things I really like about the ITU study process is to take into account and make sure that we still protect the services that we rely on on a day-to-day -day basis because they're not going away anytime soon. And, and, and that's why I think even though we say the WRC is a long process and the preparatory process, of course, is four years, it's needed because you have to do the technical studies. Well, Jennifer Manner, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. It's a pleasure. And I look forward to catching up with you again very soon, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, if you've enjoyed this interview, which I, I hope you have, uh, then uh, do check out more interviews on the ITU YouTube channel as well as SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for more information, visit www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>